Alright guys, it's time to cry back again today. Hope y'all doing well and enjoying your day so far. And with Rostermania questions ready to be answered over the coming days, Ilya's finally had a few words on the changes that Dallas Empire made in the offseason and what he thinks on Crimsix being removed off the roster. Very much intriguing your thoughts in the comment section below. Like if you guys enjoyed the video, subscribe if you are new as always. I would greatly appreciate it. Really upset the channel. Thank you very much indeed for doing that. First of all, many questions remain as to exactly what's going on with some of these other players that have not yet been re-signed to pro teams. Temp, of course, last year cited on the Thieves, then he went to the Paris Legion. What's going on there? Right, we don't know what's happening with the Chicago NRG spot right now. And um, you know, could Washington come in and buy that one? Is Cloud9 even in discussions? Is complexity considering it? And um, also, what are Paris doing, right? Do they actually want to try and build a good roster this year? Or are they going to do the same thing they did last year? Wait until the last minute, sign some leftover players for the minimum, and um, build a roster that's never going to win. So if they want to do that, then uh, just sell your spot and get out of the league would be my um, <laughs> would be my advice. But um, anyway, like Temp is a player that uh, you know you'd think would be talented enough to get a spot somewhere. Maybe this is indicating uh, something along those lines, but of course it is tough to say. This is well from Silly. He's uh, talking about this like tips thing that edited Twitter. Like, I don't know, people could donate and stuff like that. It's kind of confusing. But um, anyway, like as Bulletproof says in reply, please do good in challenges this year. Oh, I will, says Silly. So big questions really for guys like Silly. Of course, we saw Apathy from the Los Angeles Grillers team as well. Retired just a couple of days ago now. Silly and Assault, what are they going to do, right? Because there's only so many uh, coaching spots. There's only so many analyst spots. There's only so many like um, yeah, analyst spots on the desk, right? And like talent spots available that um, a lot of these players are going to have to think look what do I do do I go down the content route like how are these doing or do I play in challenges and try and get back into the league it's just so hard for some of these players to decide so um, big questions still on the table for some of these guys silly very much included this I thought was interesting as well from Envoy especially what Proz points out in the reply there's a hitch World War 2 throwback going on I believe tomorrow and Envoy wants to play it with Vivid he's looking for two players to join the lot now of course um, pretty much all the pro teams as far thus far, have not yet signed a substitute or anything for the upcoming season. We believe, at least last year, I'm pretty sure that official roster lock was sometime in January, like um, before the first like a uh, kickoff classic or whatever they called it last year. So um, I'm pretty sure that's when the roster lock is, just so that if teams want to sign subs, they can do so like, um, you know, during the middle of the season in a way, or like before the season starts, but after the game comes out. So they don't have to determine what their starting roster is going to be until a much closer to the time, much closer to the deadline. Of course, we don't know what was going on with Vivid right now, right? You can imagine he'd get a spot somewhere after the performances he had last year. But um, if he doesn't, then maybe LA Thieves think, okay, Vivid could be a perfect substitute for our roster. And uh, maybe Envoy and Vivid have a good relationship here. It seems like they want to play this tournament together. So very interesting, certainly, what um, what these teams will do in terms of their sub spots. And Vivid, of course, I'd imagine will get a spot somewhere anywhere on a starting team sooner rather than later. But um, of course, uh, well, no rumours are really coming out about that the last several weeks. This also from Zero, right? Do I need to send some clips in? I need that dab location, says Envoy. Some say I'm still at 7T back in England. So I hope Hopefully London get it sorted out and can get her into the States in time because, um, you know, the rest of the team as well. Because, of course, that's been the major issue, really, that London have had. And Zero's had, especially with this organisation, the last year or so. This also from a BC. Can't believe the new COD comes out in a month. Time it straight up flies. Which, um, I guess, is true. At the same time, it does feel like quite a long time since the World Championship. And um, I'm sure October is going to be a pretty long month as well before the new game comes out. And, um, I mean, and all the content that goes along with that. This as well, of course, from Doug. As, um, you know, let's go. He seems to have his team ready to go and stuff over at Pine is GG. One month until we're back. As it says more, I wonder what Doug's team will be. I'm pretty sure it's Doug, Zinx, and two more that I've not yet been, been confirmed, but according to Doug, are getting signed and are ready to go. This is also an interesting tweet from Doug. I want to be a mentor to the next kid who's out there right now trying to be big time. Fred actually goes and likes this tweet, right? Of course, Fred joining a Seattle surge for the upcoming year. He's going to be a pro player. Doug's still on the challenger side, of course, for now. But um, I mean, anyway, I thought this was kind of interesting. Maybe Doug's thinking about one of the players that's on his team that he wants to kind of mentor and bring up. But uh, maybe that could be valuable to Predrad right, to go with so much experience in center that um, yeah I'm sure he could do some great work in situations like this and I think he's even offered other teams to do like scouting and, and, and like coaching and stuff for them in the past so um, yeah it would be interesting to see how it goes Doug always keeping himself relevant this then from Los Angeles Grillers Donk 8's done he's just getting started I thought this was great to see Abathy joining them back as a content creator interesting in a way that um, of course we talked about his retirement yesterday that um, he wasn't offered a substitute spot here I think that uh, some people would have said that would have made a lot of sense given their relationship in the previous year. At the same time, maybe they want to bring in a more unknown quantity and don't feel like Abathy can add too much in terms of the SMG line of a Seaman Hook if they needed to make a move. So um, this is good to see though, especially for a pro player like Abathy. It could be difficult to be a solo content creator for Abathy without like organizational backing because you don't get like a guaranteed salary, like um, you know, don't have people to help you get sponsors and stuff like this. So um, I think it definitely makes sense to do this. And also Los Angeles Grillers continue to make pretty big moves. It's actually quite impressive. Like uh, they've not only made a pretty scary roster on paper in a Seaman Hook 
Gunless and Slasher, but now they're bringing on Curse like Avathy as content creators. This is just good for the scene in general. So congratulations to Avathy on a fantastic career, but also um, well, a great next chapter. And uh, well, LAG continue to surprise us and take step ups here in this off season. This then from Booby Dooby. I don't know how you better pronounce that. My apologies. But um, well, Shotzi spotted here in the gym. Now, of course, there are discussions about Halo. Could he potentially go back over there? We saw a few weeks ago, right? And there was a well, a bit of heated discussion really between Crim6 and Shotzi when apparently Crim6 was effectively being dropped on the call with Rambo and Shotzi. And uh, well, Shotzi apparently sounded relatively happy to be doing so. But from the other side, we haven't really heard too much, right? From uh, from Illy's side, like what does Illy think about it, right? Because Crim has talked about uh, that they're still on good terms, right? Crim and Illy. There's um, yeah, he's still my pope or whatever that he said on stream a couple of weeks ago. So um, well, we don't really know what Illy thinks on the situation. We we get some indication here, in, well, in just a couple of seconds that we will indeed look at. And of course, Shotzi and Illy seemingly going to still be on the same roster for next year. This is a Dallas News article. I couldn't find an exact tweet for this article that we're going to look at right now. So thought I'd bring this up on screen just to remind me of what's going on. It's written by Sean Collins. If you guys want to check it out, I'll leave it linked down below for the entire thing. A couple of excerpts just to run through. Dallas is no stranger to drastic roster changes, of course, talking about the, well, the Optic Dallas thing that is possible. Crim6, the winningest player in COD history, and that's his unrestricted free agent. I'm pretty sure he's a restricted free agent because there was some discussion about that. Vivid as well. So pretty sure an RFA. But anyway, it's never Never easy and it never does get easy, says uh, Illy. So this is Illy's surname. I don't really want to try and butcher it, so we'll just go with that. Sometimes you have to do what's in the best interest for the team, and we thought that not having Porter was the best thing for the team. So um, it is interesting how how this came came about, really, right? That like who's making these choices? Like Vivid, of course, was gone. So does he mean in terms of we? What does he mean by we, right? Like when Illy's saying this, does he mean like Shotzi and Illy? Does he mean Shotzi, Rambo and Illy? Or like um, who exactly is involved in this decision? Because you can imagine Vivid may may not be because um, you know, he was already going to be out of the team, I suppose, regardless, especially with this change they're making, right, with, with the Optic Dallas stuff coming into play, supposedly. I believe that Hastro was uh, significantly less eager to let Crim6 go, which is understandable, but, um, yeah, I mean, we thought that not having Porter, that being Crim6, of course, was the best thing for the team. So, yeah, Elliot obviously thought this as well. It wasn't just like a, a Shotzi and Rambo show or whatever, and, of course, Rambo and Crim have a, a very long and, uh, well, long ten years of relationship as well. So, very interesting. Of course, at the end of the day, Crim's effectively been dropped for Dashi if everything goes through as expected. And, um, you know, like, uh, this is Shotzi's surname as well, Quavers Castro, felt Porter, and I'll probably butcher that as well, felt Porter was critical in helping the Empire learn new games and providing veteran experience, but Porter himself did admit on, on the well, Twitch we looked at, he wasn't the best teammate on his own Twitch stream. This, I thought, was also kind of interesting to touch on in the same article. There was some talk about the movement here in Call of Duty Vanguard, and this is something I haven't really heard talked about too much as of yet. Basically, in Modern Warfare and Warzone, you could tactical sprint, slide cancel, and then tactical sprint again, says Illy. But in Vanguard, there's a delay between sliding and that second tactical sprint. I think that's kind of dope. I think they put it in on purpose just to get rid of the slide cancel spam. This is like, I didn't get the chance to play the beta, so I haven't really got to experience this, but at least kind of saying that like, um, yeah, look, the tactical sprint is actually better in this title than it has been in previous games. The slide cancel spam is kind of going to go away, which um kind of ties in relatively interestingly to what Crimsix had to say several weeks ago now, where he was kind of saying that like FaZe, they're a great team, no doubt, but um they're also the best slide cancelers, right? They're the best at doing that in the entire game. This is kind of when Crimsix a couple of weeks ago was discussing it, or at least was discussing uh, the Shotzi situation that was going on. He was baiting Seattle Surge, but um, he also came out and had a few words to say on how Shotzi, like he felt like he'd been somewhat disrespected in the way Shotzi was treating it in the call they had when he was getting dropped from the team. But, um, you know, clearly Illy also thought a, a similar thing, right, in terms of having Porto leaving the team was going to be a step in the right direction for Dallas. And maybe that makes sense with Scump and Dashi coming in, but, um, you know, maybe you could argue that keeping Crim6 and just bringing Scump in could also be a viable option. It's, um, it's very difficult and interesting to say. I wanted to touch on the slide cancel things a little bit more real quick because this comes out from Envoy back in April now. This is kind of when they um, they nerfed the slide cancel or kind of got rid of it to a degree. It wasn't um, it wasn't all the way gone, but Envoy and many other players at the time were like, wow, well, yes, slide cancel gone, let's go. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm back in business, baby. A lot of the AR players would certainly say it as well because there's some players who love a slide cancel and that they're generally the, the cracked out SMG types that benefit from that, that incredible movement that they have. Now, um, Envoy isn't really one of those SMG players. He prefers to be more traditional I suppose, in his movements, and he says, I'm back in business, but then uh, we get it, like, literally the next day, the side cancel is back, so they effectively reverted it in Black Ops Card Water how it was, but um, some talk from Illy that in this game, that the side cancel spam is going to go away to some degree. It still exists, don't get me wrong, but um, it's not as bad, maybe, as it has been in Modern Warfare and Warzone, and maybe even in Black Ops Card War, so that could be a step in the right direction, and, uh, well, who exactly does that help, who does that hurt, because a lot of players, the likes of Slasher, they've talked about, yes, yeah, side cancel cards, they're the worst cards I've ever seen, Crimson has been talking about the phase guys saying, yeah, they love a slide cancel without it, they wouldn't be as good as they are. So, um, you know, maybe this is uh, some angles.
skills to keep your eyes on going forward into the new title. Just wanted to finish off with this from the COD League as the final touch. I always managed to get these wrong, but I thought I'd get it wrong again just, just for the banter. Which team won the first official match of CDL 2021? So I'm guessing, I'm not actually sure if they meant um, in the, the show matches right here, or they meant the, like the first match of the entire season. But um, yeah, maybe it was in their first match debut against Minnesota. I think they mean here the actual first official match rather than like the pre-season match, because I kind of remember the Florida versus FaZe match, and I was pretty sure that it wasn't like the first match anyway, but I went for it anyway. And I'm pretty sure Dallas got the most votes here because um, people thought about the preseason games. But uh, Los Angeles teams apparently did come out hot, even though this image on screen right here isn't even their roster that um, they had at the start of the year. They, of course, had Donnie Temp at the time. But, um, well, a lot changed for the organization since then. But very much intrigued to get your thoughts on all this stuff in the comment section below. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did enjoy it, I'd greatly appreciate a like on the video. Really upset the YouTube icon. I know you enjoyed this content. I know people like you may enjoy this content as well. And I'll grow the competitive corner to the community. Thank you watching as always. Take care. And I will see you next time. I dropped in one word, I would say happily. I deadass texted Ant afterwards. I was like, bro, the fact that you sounded happy when you gave me a reason was like, frankly, just, I mean, I was sitting there like, dude, now I'm pissed the f off. Like now I'm mad, dude. You know?